I was born into a non-Christian family, actually a Hindu family in a small village in Nepal. Um, but uh, so I was born, I guess, a Hindu, as you would say. Uh, but even when I was that young, I actually had a questioning spirit. I would question the customs and cultures, and actually, and that came further, further emphasized when I got really sick uh, around the age of five, to the point where I was actually nearing death. And they brought witch doctors to the village, and I had to go through this healing per se. But it was actually very exhausting and painful, and I didn't get any healing. So when I became sick, I, as a girl, I was considered worthless. Like they would just disregard me. At times, they, I would just be sleeping out in the in the shed or outdoors. You know, just like I wasn't as their way of saying helping out with the, you know. I also remember know that my father was an alcoholic, and in fact, he beat my mother up a lot, especially because she had two girls and not a son. And that was one of the reasons I was also left at the hospital when they brought me in and just left there. I was about six-ish years old. Um, I was in, a ho in the hospital for about six months. Uh, and it's at that hospital where I um, met my parents. Um, but again, in the ho I was like at death's door when I came to the hospital, extremely malnourished full of just different uh, disease like tuberculosis and scabies and uh, the doctors actually didn't think I would live. Um, but it was amazing because the doctors were all Christians. It was a Christian hospital and they would all gather in the mornings for prayer before they went and did their shift and they put me in God's hands and that's where I was healed. But then I got adopted into Ruth and Robert's family which uh, you know, was God's plan in there. Yeah, he brought me into the family through lots of obstacles. Like my siblings actually didn't want another sibling. And when I got into the family, they're like, we should adopt her. And so she was their decision to be, for me to be adopted. And then just getting all my paperwork actually was a huge hassle because in Nepal there was a big civil unrest, unrest going on and political issues. And the village I was at from was actually one of the main hubs for the civil unrest, and so getting those papers was tough. Lots of big things happened next, actually. Um, a lot, I've had a lot of physical healing happen in my life. Um, yeah, like I was near death's door, it was in God's hands, He healed me. I ended up getting tuberculosis on my joints. Um, I wasn't, the, they didn't think I'd really be able to walk, especially because the tuberculosis ate away at my socket and femur, so I had no hip joint, but I was able to walk. Um, I had a drop foot, which is where the inability to move my foot up and down, and God healed that, and, I, like, and it was permanent healing. We left Nepal to go to England to formalize my adoption, and there um, I was at a Christian school because my parents thought it would be less of a shock and transition. Actually, it was probably one of my worst uh, times in my life I've been through. Um, my spirit was downtrodden, like I would cry myself to sleep every night for two years. And I actually left England with a lot of hurt and anger towards these people, a lot of bitterness and anger. And it took about four years in, 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 living in Singapore to not get over it actually. It was the only way I was able to actually think of my time back there was through a vision that God gave me. Um, we were at a small prayer group and somebody was praying over us about the Father heart of God and they said think about your most difficult time and that's the time that came into mind and is asking God where he was and he showed me where he was in those moments but rather it wasn't just where he was but where I was with him in that moment and it was the image of uh, me lying in his lap and him stroking my head and both of us crying and it wasn't just me crying of the pain, but God feeling my pain as well. That really made me see, okay, the pain and bitterness I felt there, I could forgive all those people. He recently, um, I guess, image or spoke to me was, um, I was actually driving by Superstore, coming to Deep Cove. And I was just thinking back to my days of teens, you know, we're all body conscious. and. 
Um, so I have a lot of scars on my body from operations and my scabies scars. And I used to be really self-conscious of those. And over the years, you know, like with social media, we've been told, you know, be proud of them. It's what you've overcome, you know. These are the things we should be proud of. And so I've become less and less self-conscious. But in that moment, on that drive, God has said, it's not what you've overcome, but it's what I've done for you. Those scars are not your survival, but my battle scar. And these scars represent that Jesus fought and he won and he brought me out of that village in Nepal. He healed me in that process where his healing was pain-free, it was relieving, and there was no exhaustion, you know? And so for me, is this is my declaration that I am his, and he has won my battle for me. He died for me, and he took my sins, my shame, and he fought that battle for me to be his, to be adopted in his family.